This is MathHeals.com, where you can find more links to Math YouTube videos, if you wish. Let's take a look at differentials and marginal analysis. And uh, we'll show this with an example. Some of the word problems we'll see later on kind of demonstrate the benefits of um, using differentials and marginal analysis. Um, our first problem will be say compare the values of dy and delta y for the function. Okay, so we got f of x is equal to x squared plus x minus one. Now. Um, the difference between dy and delta y, dy is our calculus based and delta y is just algebraic uh, based. So let's first look at the calculus. Take the derivative um, of f of x. Instead of f prime, I'm put dy over dx. Well, the derivative of that is 2x plus 1. Now we treat these uh, just like variables. So we multiply both sides by dx. like this. When we do that, the dx is canceling this side. And we've got dy is equal to 2x plus 1 dx. Now the, um, the delta y that we're going to be looking at is f of x plus delta x minus f of x. Now they tell us what x and delta x is here. So um, delta y is going to equal to f of x, which is 1, plus delta x, which is 0 0.01, minus f of x, which is 1. So that's going to equal to f of 1.01 .01 minus f of 1. So we'll take each one of those and plug them into our function. So we've got uh, 1.01 .01 squared plus 1.01 .01 minus 1 minus f of 1. So we'll put 1 in. So i got 1 squared plus 1 minus 1. Um, 1.01 squared. 1.01 squared gives us 1.0201 plus 1.01 .01, um, minus 1 gives us 0 0.01 minus 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2 2 minus 1 is 1 so minus 1 so that gives us 1.0301 minus 1, which gives us 0 0.0301. Okay. Now let's uh, finish this side over here. dy. Well, they told us x is equal to 1. Right here. So we'll plug in 1 for the x. And they told us dx is 0 0.01. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, times 0 0.01 gives us 0 0.03. And you see, um, they, they roughly come out, come out the same. This is, the, again, the calculus-based, and this is uh, the, um, the algebra-based. Though it is part of a uh, calculus formula. Um, we're probably going to do this in Excel, if I had to guess. Um, okay, so let's look, take a look at problem number two. Got f of x is equal to x to the negative one-half. And uh, we're going to find dy and delta y, and then do these calculations here, and x equals one. So, let's first find our derivative. The derivative of y with respect to x. Take your power, put it out in front, lower it by 1. Multiply both sides by dx, and we get dy is equal to, 
And here I got negative 1, 2, take the x and negative 3 halves. Downstairs becomes x to the positive 3 halves, dx. Now, x is always equal to 1 on everything here, so I'll go ahead and plug 1 in. And I get negative 1 over 2 times 1 to the 3 halves, dx. 1 to any power is 1, times 2 is 2, so we got negative 1 half, dx. That's where our dy is. Okay. Delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And x we said was 1. So we got f of 1 plus delta x minus f of 1. Well, if I plug those into my f of x, uh, x to the negative 1 half, that's the same as 1 over x to the positive 1 half. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse <laughs> me again. Which is 1 over square root of x. So if I pl put this in, I'm going to have 1 over the square root of 1 plus delta x minus 1 over square root of 1. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Well, square root of 1 is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. So this gives us 1 over the square root of 1 plus delta x minus 1. And that's our delta y. Yeah, let's put this into Excel. We got dx equals delta x. And uh, we got 1, 0 0.5. 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001. Next column is a dy. Well, dy from our formula, dy is equal to negative 1 half times dx. Right here. So we got equals negative 1 divided by 2 times dx, which is an a2. And then I'll fill that down. And then we got um, delta y. Delta y from our formula was this right here, 1 over square root of that. So equals 1 divided by, and then uh, square root of 1 plus delta x, which is a2, close parentheses on the square root, then minus 1. And um, then I got delta y minus dy, delta y minus dy, so we got equals c2 minus b2. I fill that down. And then I got dy divided by delta y. So that equals dy, which is b2, divided by delta y, which is c2. And I'll fill that down. And, um,. That's nice. There we go. You'll notice as our delta x dx becomes small, the difference between dy and delta y, um, they're pretty much the same. Um, you can see the difference is point zero 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 three seven four seven. I probably didn't say no zeros, but um, that just shows what happens as your dx, your delta x, becomes small. Uh, then they become one and the same. So it's a good approximation. Okay.
How do we use that in business and economic applications? Let's take a look at this problem. And um, use differentials to approximate the change in cost, revenue, or profit corresponding to an increase in sales of one unit. So, actually, let me, let me save this and start a new page. BC differentials, marginal analysis, page one. There we go. So in this one, we have C is equal to 0 0.01 x squared plus 5x plus 20, and x is equal to 10, and dx equals delta x equals 1. <coughs> okay, so use differentials to approximate change. Um, so we need to find our derivative. So I take the derivative of, of the cost with respect to x equals 0.02x plus 5. Take your power, put it out in front, lower it by 1. And again, we treat this like a variable, so multiply both sides by dx. You can think of it that way. So I'm going to do that. Those dx's cancel. And uh, we're approximating the change in cost in this, this particular one. And then they tell us x is 10. So I'll plug 10 in for the x. Plus 5 times dx, which was 1. Um, times 10, that gives us, what, 0.2? So 5.2? Let me, um, let me actually see that. 0.02 times 10, I'm not very good with decimals, plus 5, 5.2. So again, um, now here we're not, this, this won't be our approximate um, change in cost um, for every value. It's like it's not going from 3 to 4 or 4 to 5 or anything like that. This is when we're dealing with 10. Um, this is what our approximate change in cost would be. Let's take a look at the next one. This one's a revenue one. So we've got R is equal to 40x minus 0.2x squared. X is 25. And uh, dx equals delta x, which equals 1. Because they're asking about the increase in sales of one unit. So if it's um, two units, then we'd have two here. Well, if I do dr dx, derivative of that is 40 minus, put your power out in front, lower it by 1. Multiply both sides by dx. So you've got change in r, change in revenue, is equal to 40 minus 0.4x times change in x. And again, we're at we're wondering what the uh, change of x is uh, when it changes with one unit. So they're telling us dx is 1. And here I'm going to put in uh, 25 for the x times 1. And um, I think that's 30, but let me plug in my calculator just to make sure. Okay, 40 minus 0.4 times 25, 30. And again, that's our that's our estimate, uh, the approximate um, ch change in revenue we're expecting.
And one more of those. P is equal to negative x squared plus 40x minus 30. And x is 10. And dx equals delta x equals 1. Now again, realize that we're, what we're saying here is we're, we're predicting what the rate of change is going to be for the x. We're saying we want to change by se selling one more unit. Um, before we've dealt with this and it was like we didn't know the rate of change. But here we're, we're predicting what the, this part least is. And we're just wondering, okay, what's the approximate change in the profit then? So again, I take the derivative, dp over dx is equal to negative 2x plus 40. Multiply both sides by dx, so we got negative 2x plus 40 times dx. So we got negative 2 times uh, 10 plus 40 times 1, which would give us 20. kind of neat uh, when you think about uh, think about it, these that allows you to 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 estimate what the rate of change is going to be with the increase of one unit. Now these are just a lot easier. They're just wanting you to find dy. So we got y is equal to 9x squared minus 4x plus 2. And you want to find dy, so we'll take the derivative of y with respect to x. That gives us 18x minus 4. And then we multiply both sides by dx. And we got dy is equal to 18x minus 4 dx. That's our answer. This one's a little bit um, harder derivative wise, not real hair hairy, but. Now here we want to find the derivative, and this will be the quotient rule. Top part is going to be our p, bottom part is our q. Derivative of p, p prime will be 1. Derivative of q, q prime will be 1. Our formula for the quotient rule is p prime q minus p q prime over q squared. And I don't want to use that notation. Because we want to separate those two. So we've got dy over dx is equal to p prime, which is 1, times q, which is x plus 5, minus p, which is x minus 3, times q prime, which is 1, over q squared. Again, I'm going to multiply both sides by dx. So we got dy equals, um, we got x plus 5, negative out in front flips to sign everything in the parentheses. So we got negative x plus 3 over x plus 5 squared dx. Now x minus x drops away, 5 plus 3 is 8, so we got 8 over x plus 5 squared dx. And that's our answer. And the end of that section. So let me save this. Stop the recorders. I was just watching this Freddy Krueger uh, film on on uh, AMC or Sci-Fi or whatever it is. It's got to be the most insane movies ever. <laughs> These make no sense. Okay, let me stop the other recorder here.